We also partnered with the uh, called the Kymen Foundation, which will be doing things for people who have uh, sickle cell anemia. Uh, we just partnered with another organization, which we'll have a meeting on Tuesday, which we're doing something related to nourishment and developing community gardens and teaching young people how to eat and prepare food in communities who are using food stamps, how to improve their lives. So we're very much a community-based church. What we will be doing really is restarting many of the services at our own cost uh, to that are, the seniors are lacking now. So again, uh, our commitment is to be an enhancement. This facility will help us within the community. We have been in this community now locally for five years in another church. We do that kind of services now on a limited basis because we don't have the facility to do it. So our agenda is not to come and take anything from the city. Many of my residents, I'd probably say 60% of my members are local uh, uh, residents of this community. So we're, we're in no way some outside church coming to take advantage, okay? And we have committed to do substantial investment. We're, we're repairing the heating and the air. We have a quote for 4000 which is potentially going to cost us as much as ten if the heat exchanges are back. We're going to repair that at our own cost. So we're doing significant investment in this committee, and I hope the council can say this uh, to what we think about it and what our posture is in the late city. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh,
time frame on what is uh, supposed to be happening in the future has not um, come about. So, and that has nothing to do with um, uh, the um, minister and his proposal. Um, whatever transpires in the future is going to transpire. But right now we have a um, legislation that is um, supposed to be going forward, and I, I see nothing to stop. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Councilman King. Thank you. The five-year term came about as part of the negotiation with the five-year term benefits all parties involved. It was actually the best move that we could make because from the less ease perspective, which would be a church, they're going to put substantial investment into this facility. As you know, it was in disrepair when it closed. So January, uh, heating, HVAC, plumbing, Electricity. He just mentioned some of the stuff they're going to work on, and we we can get back up and talk to about it some more. Now, from a lease perspective, it's actually good for us because you know, in five years, lease. Um, uh, uh, it was just a just a poll, really, right? in, in contrast to to my, you know. Told with my colleagues, I just wanted to hear what you guys thought. Uh, I, I have some questions. Uh, Pastor Prude? Yes, sir. Come up for a second. Okay. I didn't hear your, your presentation, but okay. some of what I heard sound okay. 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 Uh, Helen is Brown was our senior facility for years. And uh, because of breakdowns, mismanagement, whatever. We over the years we put a lot of money in that in that, in that okay. place. I, I tell you, it's a nice place. Uh, my concern, from a business standpoint, Pastor, is it's a big place to heat. Okay, and I want to know. I, I see where twenty four thousand a year, two thousand a month. Uh, that's a good thing. Can you afford to? Uh, you're talking about probably a heating bill in the winter about maybe thousand dollars a month. Can you, we, and how big is and, and that's my first question. We have 200 members. We have 100 regular. I did give to Councilman King a breakdown of the budget that we assume, because we're not going to be operating the building initially. I, that that was estimated based on set, six days a week, 12 hours a day. Obviously, with that number. Obviously, as a church, we would not be doing that. So we estimated a bill of approximately seven to eight hundred dollars a month, which is well within our budget of what we currently pay. It's not a major expense increase to us. As we ramp up and begin to institute all the services, we expect the heating and conditioning costs to go up. And we have factored that, excuse me, a moment later, I just got some braces, a 62, it's not why I get that, but it's painful. So in, our, in all of our budgeting, we looked at what the current cost was. Mm -hmm. We uh, factored in the fact that we would not operate at the same rate. And so we kind of edited what we anticipated our cost was, which is well for our budget. We expect our church to grow substantially there now that we have our own identification, our own building. Right now, we're in a scenario where we're in another building that we've been subleased for five years that we're going to buy. They did not agree ultimately to sell it to us at a agreed upon price. So we have a sign that says someone else. And so we've lost lots of membership. We've not been able to grow like we want to grow, okay? We do many community programs, but we have to do them with permission from the current owner of the building not being able to do that. So we expect substantial growth. We're also the head church of a network of churches, which is 25 churches in the United States and 100 churches in Africa, which is all part of our organization. I'm the head of that organization, okay? So this will now become what we call our mother church or our central location where all of our churches come together annually, and so for all of our national, local uh, programs and ministries that we do. So that amount of money is not a major problem for us right now, and we understand as we ramp up our programs that we'll have more costs, 
but if everything goes, everything doesn't always go the way you plan it, mm -hmm. if we go 50% of what we plan it, it's very easy for us to ultimately run the building probably five or six days a week doing community service and community programs. So coming in, we budgeted about seven, eight hundred dollars a month for heating. Yes. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. I heard you say something when I was walking through about seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, the seniors that I've come in contact with, that used to go to that facility, would like to be back there. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. where they are now, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah. It, it's it's not adequate to them. Yes, sir. So, do you have in your uh, on your agenda senior programming and all that? And I heard you talk about transportation. We we have buses that, to my knowledge, Council President is sitting. Are they sitting right now? Yes, they're sitting over at the service department. So yep. if you can handle it, uh, everyone on this table is spiritual, and, and we always ask for God's blessings. And uh, there's also a business component of any church. Yep. If you don't run it right, you, you don't pay your lights, your gas, you close down. I understand. Okay. And, and I think, and this is my, my bias, I think it's a great facility. I mean, you can do programming, it's the pool tables probably, I hope they're still there and all that. Yeah. And then we got the uh, the buses, and they're relatively new, uh, that we got uh, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. So if you uh, can do what you say you do, with God's blessings, sir. Yes. <laughs> I'm all right, okay? I, I think you guys okay. will not regret this. Okay. It's a real good church, and I, we're sincere about this, about what we plan to do. And we sat down and budgeted. I, I'm a, one thing I would never want to do as a pastor, come to our church one day and say, hey, listen, we got to leave, we can't pay. We budgeted. Well, Mr. Yes. Pastor, um, under your lease, all of that is covered. And um, has been factored in here. Okay. So, and there's safe field situation that uh, protects not only the I got a question to you, uh, Council President. With you can sit down, uh, Pastor. What's the situation with the buses and, and the whole program around Helen this ground since you had some changes over this past year? Well, as far as I know, mm -hmm. uh, I talked to um, uh, the uh, service department, and I talked to uh, Mr. Uh, Leach, mm -hmm. and until somebody, uh, you know, comes up with an offer, they will sit there until that time. But I think the most appropriate person to be asked that would be the, the, uh, the mayor's designee, who is the law um, person right now, if you know anything about the buses and what's going to happen to the buses that we have bought. I don't have that information. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Are we talking about the buses that were parked at the Elmer's building? That, that were bought. That were using? Mm -hmm. Okay. Two buses. Yeah. Okay. Together is probably half of a bus. Right? Because this came up as part of our conversation. They would, the past proof is here, would at some point like to entertain buying or renting or using the buses and we were told that one is down and the other one's you know in some kind of shape and well I was just, I was just listening I was just listening to Nate and Nate we were saying how or Councilman Martin how this place is great and right the facility I, I would love for you to go through there now oh my goodness you you will be You'll be surprised. Okay. Uh, time hasn't been good that though. But what they got to do with the, the buses, brother? The roof is not good. Well, okay. you're saying that the buses are new. Yeah. And I was told one of them is out, and the other one's halfway working. Well, four, four buses. buses. We don't know how, what, yeah. what condition the buses are in. It's four buses. And um, Mr. Strother said there's four. There's but two sitting there. Two are sitting there. Two, two in the garage. 